Hello, and welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast, brought to you by the Malfers Group team, where each week we tackle important, actionable topics to help churches thrive. And now, here's your hosts, Scott Ball and AJ Matthew. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 74 of the Church Revitalization Podcast. We're excited to be back with you again this week. As always, there's my buddy over there, Scott Ball. Hello, hello, AJ Matthew. (laughs) And our special guest today in the most awesome of Christmas sweatshirts, Danny Laverde, (laughs) coming to you, get this, for for our American audience, uh, all the way from Sweden. Danny, how are you doing, brother? Mm, Very good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. So, Danny is one of the one of the newest team members here at the Malfers Group. He is one of our guides, and we are so beyond excited to have him on the team. We have a vision for expanding our ministry around the world, and Danny is a huge part of that in bringing the Malfers Group process and message and hope into the church in Europe. And uh, from his uh, his location in Sweden and moving out from there. And so that is just beyond exciting for us. But Danny has just a lot of ministry experience under his belt already as a worship leader um, in in a seminary study in various churches that he's worked at. Um, some fantastic writing that he's done and serving as a min- as a missionary in Sweden now for 14 years. Is that right, Danny? It's 14 years. It goes fast. It's life fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but today, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna keep moving on, and we're gonna talk about um, things close to Danny's heart, and that is the church in Europe. And um, so, Danny, set up for us um, kind of the state of the church, the climate of the church in Europe, and and the need mm. for meaningful spiritual revitalization. Mm. So basically, uh, for um, as long as I know, it's been a decline in the church all over Europe. Um, I would say like we've been very influenced by socialism and Marxism here. And um, it's a tough thing because like Marxist wants to take away God from the picture completely. And, and that has been part of um, education, universities. That, I mean, even the great universities of Germany they are based on Marxism, which they do desiccate everything. Like theology is just a discipline um, rather than something spiritual that affects your soul and can affect your, the spirit, uh, the, um, the community. Uh, we help plant the church, a friend of ours uh, in Amsterdam. The amount of Christian there is 0.01%. Wow. And 33% are Muslims just in Amsterdam. So I just think that like, whoa, what's happening? It's a shift in the air there. Um, another statistic I can give you guys is um, uh, in France, just because of the COVID-19, uh, it's a decline between 30 and 40%. You can see like that many churches um, are losing a lot. And I would say like some denomination, and I have numbers here from the, the Catholic church, they lost so far 90 million euros. But that's uh, that's the climate. You can see that uh, it's been going down, like with the churches, and at the same time we talk about compromise, about uh, truth. Again, if the foundation is not Jesus, it's Marxism. Everything is wobbling, and it's gonna fall eventually. So uh, the things that's the the climate. I feel, um, and that's what I've been studied all, studying also during my master uh, was that. The church needs a revival. The church needs to see Christ moving in a way that impacts, revitalizes the, the, the church in Europe. And that's the thing, like while with doing this, I, I know many of good friends, good leaders in uh, Switzerland and Germany, they have created a movement of discipleship training. And you can see that how, I mean, if you look it up, like um, it's a church called Credo. Uh, in Germany, and they are just like expanding. Even during this season of COVID, they're growing. And this is really cool and very interesting because many pastors are making compromises and they lose more than they win instead of like standing firm of what the word of God is saying Mm. and see how God, just like 
make it grow because it's his world. So um, uh, I've seen this contrast between some churches who compromises and churches who don't. And and I think that's uh, I think there's a key point uh, to see there. I don't know if that answered your question, but uh, yeah, that's uh, the climate, uh, how I see the climate moving, and that's how I see it. So, do you see um, a remnant, if you will, of evangelicalism that uh, that is the foundation by which you can continue to grow in ministry there? Yeah, yes, definitely. I think that um, as long as we take away the the old mindsets uh, of the church. And that's a big lie from the devil, I believe, mm-hmm. is that to, that we say openly that Europe is the dark continent. And it's like, uh, it's not a hopeful picture. <laughs> so, so and, I, and I think that uh, because, I mean, it's like driving. If your eyes are on something and we hear it, it's like we're going that way. So it's like if we keep saying that it is dark, then it's going to stay dark. But if you say, oh, there is hope. Oh, there is another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, the focus changes. And the focus is like, there is light. There is hope in that church. There is hope in that one. And then, as I said uh, and mentioned before, is that I believe that there is a remnant. And then this remnant is actually starting to come up with ideas that no one is thinking. The focus before was inside the building. And now it's like, if all the churches who are really this remnant, they're gonna they're not gonna say, oh, we need to close down. Mm-hmm. They're gonna say, okay, wh- how can we figure this out? It's like, what do we need to learn? How can we tackle this? <laughs> in other words, and this is another lie that I've heard so many times. Oh, the young people are not interested in in Jesus, but I believe that um, this remnant is is made of old, young, young adults. I mean, name it from any ethnicity well together and we make it happen and i think that uh, i've seen that happen and i've seen that change so many churches uh system let's say if i go back to amsterdam that was so cool i think the church grew from 25 people to 150 in a year and a half hmm. it's awesome i mean and for me, like, well, well, I mean, I've been studying like church planting many years and in 18 months, if you grew that much, that's like, wow. Yeah. In Amsterdam, where there is only 0.01%, impossible. And, and it's like, and, and yet God made it happen. And it was like, wow. So again, like if there is a remnant of people who wants things done God's way, it, it happens. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. Absolutely. Those stories need to be told. You know, that encouragement has got to make its way through the church in Europe to show that God is still there. He's present. He's aware. He's moving. He has a plan. Leaders need those examples. They, they've they got to see that that what they desire is what God desires and, and that um, and that if they can put the effort in and, you know, and try to find help from resources that are available. Um, and, and networking and, and getting together and talking about things that there's hope. And uh, I'm excited mm-hmm. that you want to bring that hope to, you know, to mm-hmm. all of Europe. I guess back in 2005 or so, um, had the opportunity to spend a, a summer in France and uh, attended a, um, a, a Baptist church in Caen. And it was the only evangelical church in the entire city. In fact, one of the only evangelical churches um, between there in Normandy and and uh, Paris. It's just very, 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 very few. And I would imagine that, that you have these similar situations throughout all of France and um, certain, probably in Sweden and the Netherlands and other places where those churches, I can imagine they must feel isolated. I had some. I mean, I had some phone calls uh, already for the month first, and uh, I realized that many of the people I've talked with, they're so stuck in this box, thinking that I have to do this on my own. And I'm talking leaders. I'm talking pastors who think that this is my job. This is my assignment. This is what I'm supposed to do. And they don't go outside that box to get the help they need to make the church grow. And and that's. For me, like it's, it's it's a bit silly because like we want to help, 
we want to help. We want to see them prosper. We want to see them grow. We want to see them reach in the community. And they cannot do that alone. And I think that those patterns is to break that it's my job. It's like, no, it's not your job. It's actually Christ's church. And it's his job to make it grow. You just need to follow him. It's like, and if God has sent you a blessing, you need to take good care of it and be a good steward. And if, I mean, if, if that um, blessing is the Malfur's group, then they just need to say, okay, uh, I lay down my pride and, okay, help me. As soon as I find those kind of leaders, I know I can work with that. Because if they're humble enough to go that direction, that means they want to learn. And if they want to learn anything, it's possible. So that's um, my my way of listening to, to people's voice when I'm on the phone with it. So yeah, that's great. <clears throat> tell us tell us about. I mean, we've we've got some of some of your thoughts on on ministry there, and and I know one of them is this concept of new wineskin. Um, that the church would be mm. everything that God designed it to be. Tell us, tell us from your heart mm. what that means to you. I, I really think that um, sometimes the old, old way of doing things needs to, to die, basically, mm. because we cannot contain the new thing. I mean, if, if I'm just thinking theoretically, I cannot allow an analog system handle 10 terabytes of digital it's impossible. So I'm just thinking sometimes it's the same thing. The church needs to change its format, not its message, but the format, like how we do it. And and I think that's what I mean with the, the new church, a new pros, uh, prospect of uh, perspective on how to do church. Because like, I know we love our traditions. Like you go to church, you have the guy saying hi, and then you have the small video chat and and then the worship, and then the preacher, and then some prayers, and then you go home. Uh, yes, but is it really church? Is it really how the church was supposed to be doing stuff? Mm -hmm. And I think that there, there is the the the, uh, the thought for me like on new wine. But like a year ago, no one in the church would have tried Zoom home groups. They would try together, and then if nothing, I mean, if nobody comes, they would not make anything happen. But now it's like they are so against the wall. It's like, we need to meet. I need to, to see someone else than my my spouse. <laughs> it's like, then they put <laughs> they put the Zoom on because they want to see people. They want to um, to, to connect. They want to, uh, to be part of a community. And I think that's something that, again, the new wine skin. It's like, maybe now the church is learning how to be the church how to be there for one another, create small groups. Yeah, even in the big picture of their home church, but there are small groups and they're there for one another, listening to each other's problem, what they're going through. I mean, with the COVID-19, many of them are, are losing people. In one side, you can see like the, the government with all this restriction are trying to close us down, but the church always find a way mm -hmm. to meet. We're reinventing church. And I like that. And that's what I mean by um, new wine skin. And that's the thing Like we need to continue to do that because whatever is ahead of us, we need to be that church that innovates all the time. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about like flashlights and good sound and stuff. I'm thinking way bigger than that. Like we need to create new technology, whatever, whatever it takes. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's so well said. I think that, you know, you take a, um, you know, an analogy, we will sometimes use like home improvement type analogies mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. You know, you may have a house that desperately needs updating and renovation, and it's mm -hmm. easy to put off those significant changes um, unless, you know, if a flood comes or a fire comes, some sort of a disaster comes, then you have to do it. You have to, mm -hmm. to renovate. You have to gut the thing and, and rebuild um, because external forces put you in that situation um, or, or the, or the thing gets abandoned. And I think that this is true in Europe. It's certainly true in the, in the, the, in North America. So maybe all of Western churches, the COVID-19 pandemic was the flood or fire that we needed to either push us into just go ahead and close, or it's time for, as you say, a, a new wineskin, a new way of thinking and approaching yeah um 
approaching church. And so we should see this as an opportunity and a blessing in some ways, even as it's wrought. You know, we don't want to be, uh, we know that many people have died and that is tragic um, and fallen ill and that's tragic. The, the silver lining is that it's pushed us to be the church again. Uh, and that is, I think, a good thing. You know, you know, Europe is ahead of the United States in in the aspect of church decline. And so, you know, it's a cautionary tale for the United States church, the North American <clears throat> North American church um, to not let things go that far. Um, you know, I think we're blessed that we we I think we've got a greater quantity of people recognizing the decline of the church in the United States and ministries like ours and others working to stem the tide and, and to rebuild. And um, so, you know, I mean, it's such a blessing, you know, for, for people like you, Danny, that, you know, have come to this realization that there's a work to be done. Um, and it's going to take a level of humility in the existing churches, even the ones that maybe, you know, at least by, by some account of relativity are healthy. Um, it takes a level of humility in the church to say we could be doing better or we've lost sight of our, of our main focus. And, and that's our mission to make mature disciples of Jesus. So um, I'm, I'm super excited to watch this unfold in the coming years. Um, you know, as you begin a, a foothold in this, this um, season of ministry for you and, uh, and the connections that you're able to make, I, I can't wait to meet these pastors that, that will hear your message and say, yeah, yeah, I, that resonates mm -hmm. with me, or I've been thinking about that for a mm -hmm. long time, and and how can we mm -hmm. do this? Um, because I know mm -hmm. you're going to end up building a coalition that that's going to begin some momentum there. There is a remnant. People are crazy about Jesus, mm -hmm. who want to follow him with everything they have. And I think that's these people are key. That's what I'm always praying for. I'm praying for God to show me the right person, the right pastor the one who wants to learn, the one who wants to go forward, not the one who wants to compromise and lose everything because that's the end. I mean, if you just listen to the word of Proverbs, what does it say? It said, the, the way of man seems good to him, yet it leads to death. Mm. Seems seems good. Um, God has a point that's like only his, his ways are the only ways, uh, the only way that leads to life. And I think that's what the church needs in Europe and also in the States and more presence of God in everything we do. And I think that our little job in there is like to restore and recalibrate the, the, the mission. It's like, is, is the mission the mission? Are we doing what Jesus asked us to do? Mm -hmm. And I know that some people listening will not agree with that as we, we talked about it, um, but I really believe that this is what we're called to do. Because Jesus said, send you to make disciples. We're called to do that. So, um, and I really like also the verse prior to that verse. It said, I, Jesus said, I have received the authority and now I send you go and make disciples. So it's yeah. like, there is an authority in the kingdom that goes with uh, what we're doing. And that's what I know for sure that we're going to succeed in what we're doing in Europe, in the States and in the Spanish uh, side with um, Ivan. So I really think that uh, this is going to go great because we're doing and fulfilling what God is asking us to do. Amen. Something I just want to highlight before we wrap this up. Yeah. Um, the exact process that we're using in the United States in English is being translated into, into Swedish and to yeah. French by Danny. Mm -hmm. So if you are listening to this and your church is not primarily English speaking, but you primarily speak French or you speak Swedish, um, and you'll hear from Yvonne in our episode with him, and he's translating into Spanish. If, you, if you're not natively speaking English and you would like to use our materials in those languages, um, you need to go to malfersgroup.com and let us know and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a church in France or I'm a, a Francophone church in Quebec. Or Africa. Uh, or, yeah, or Africa. or what, I mean, Fran uh, French is one of the largest languages, lang in the most uh, widely spoken. It's in the top five, isn't it, AJ? Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. In the world. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I just want to be really clear about that. It's one of the reasons why we're so excited about having Danny on our team is because of his ability to work individually with churches, but also the reach that he's going to have even beyond where he might be able to travel in person because he's helping to provide the digital versions of our process in these other languages. Yeah. 
So um, I just want to be very clear on that, that this is an exciting opportunity for your church, even if you don't have a lot of money, even if you don't speak English, um, these materials are going to be available for you. And uh, we're actively working on this now. And certainly as soon as they're released, you'll see it all online. Um, and uh, we're just excited about that. And we want to thank you, Danny, for um, doing this hard work of translating. And um, we're working together with you to get these things produced. Um, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for doing it. Um, you're not certainly not doing it because it's bringing in um, tens of millions of dollars into your life. Um, but you're doing it because you love Jesus and you love the church. And uh, just as AJ and I do the things we do uh, for, for the love of the work and the love of the church and love of Jesus. So I just want to say thanks before we wrap this up. Thanks for the work you're doing and i um, excited to see the fruit of it um, in the weeks and months and years to come. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, those, you know, those of you listening in the United States or North America or where, wherever you are around the world, we would love to get to know you. Um, we are constantly looking for partners that will sow into our ministry so that we can continue to build the church around the world. And you can do that at malfordsgroup.com, get in touch with us and, um, and be able to, to provide resources uh, for us to continue to create and to resource the church and now in a variety of languages, um, as we see vision begin to come to fruition for us um, in reaching other languages around the world, uh, we couldn't be more excited. And that, uh, that's happening because of generosity from so many of you already. And we're, we're thankful for that. Well, this has been episode 74 of the Church Revitalization Podcast. You can read today's show notes at malfersgroup.com slash 74 where the article going along with this episode written by Danny will be there to, to uh, give you a little bit more information about the things we've talked about today and how you can participate in his ministry there in Europe. We're thankful for you wherever you are in the ministry that you have to build the, the Church of Jesus, and uh, we'll be praying for you continuously, and we'll see you back again next week on the Church Revitalization Podcast. Thank you. Thank you.